I think it's important that um, we leave here today understanding what AMCA and the BIMMEP OS, OS steering committee's vision is moving into the future. And also give you a bit of background and uh, an update into what the implementation timetable looks from here. Our vision is an industry that is well informed and well educated and simply not competing on standards. And when we started this initiative, um, the initial feedback was, oh, I've, I've already built lots of these libraries and we're not going to change, that's my competitive advantage. Well, we have a great belief that competitive advantage isn't based around standards. It's based around how people, processes and your systems use standards. But if we're all operating on one standard, that's the benchmark that we can all be measured against, and that's a true measure of competitive advantage. It's a total solution for the specialist building services sector built by the industry for the industry, and that's where we need everyone in this room's help. It's a business model that, um, moving forward, um, we can see will be predicated on the Green Building Council of Australia's business model. Wherein we'll have known and accepted standards mandated by clients, including government. We'll have accredited organisations, accredited professionals in BIM BOS. There will be continue, continuing professional development required for these accreditations. And there, most importantly, there will be a clarity of rules that also supports and encourages innovation. But m most of all, the main part of our vision is that we've got to start delivering the economic value of BIM. We've heard, a l <coughs> excuse me. We've heard a lot of speakers today talk about the cost impact of introducing BIM and the waste that is going on in the industry, not just on BIM projects, but on all construction projects. You know, figures ranging from 3% up to 30% of total construction cost. So reducing drafting and modelling costs will go a great way towards delivering the economic value of BIM, as will greatly improve coordination, less waste, duplication and rework. ECI, or Early Contractor Involvement, or IPD, which we've heard so much about today, becoming the norm in lieu of the exception in project delivery. Increased prefabrication, Increased BIM to site solutions, as we heard from Trimble and, and uh, Shorepoint today. And improve commissioning and maintenance as we move forward. So the roadmap moving forward. The program is that we need, now need to take something that has, over the last 12 months, developed from um, a thought, a vision by AMCA, and quite frankly has got the, to this point by a lot of work by some key individuals and the steering uh, group, uh, the steering committee. And we now have to produce a commercialisation plan so we can take BIM Metapause and deliver on the promises that we've made today. These include things like service level agreements with our major software vendors, memorandums of understanding with the supply chain, and so forth. We need to appoint equipment model development subcommittees. Um, to date, as you've heard, we've had the Pump Industry Association involved, but there are many, many parts to that. And to give you an idea, um, speaking with one of the major consultants that's presented today, in their, um, in their internal Revit library, 
they have developed over 2,200 individual components in-house. And I'm sure it's all been developed to a very stringent standard, knowing this organisation. And I'm sure it's been well uh, implemented within their organisation. But one thing I can guarantee is that that uh, quantity of, of items and models is duplicated in their competitor um, and it will be built to a different standard. And that's the challenge we have. We need clients, particularly government and builders and consultants, to start specifying BIM MEP OZ as the BIM platform moving BIM forward in this country. Just like clients started mandating the green the Green Star about 10 years ago and government were an exemplar in that and that's what we need them to do here. And on that point, we need everyone to join our voice with government and make sure that we're heard. Um, you know, it's, no, uh, it's not a, a, a fact that's lost on us that the Singapore and Singapore government has devoted $450 million over the next five years to BIM-enabled project delivery, where each uh, consultant and trade contractor involved in a BIM-enabled project is given a grant of about $100,000 to assist them in upskilling themselves and educating themselves based on a standard. The, um, the Revit BIMMEP OZ uh, release is uh, going to be available in user acceptance testing to a small group, uh, not in the too distant future, and it'll be launched in 2012. And the TSI FabMEP OZ interface, as you know, is currently available, and that will also be going through, um, as Jim uh, asked this morning, we need people on the platform using it and giving TSI feedback of where it can be improved. So what can you do? Industry input and solutions via our website communities and, uh, and our, what we've nearly called blogs, but we changed it to communities. Um, and to reiterate Warwick's uh, analogy with Wikipedia, you know, we need everyone to, when they have an idea, put it on that website, give us feedback, and we'll try and implement it. Participate in subcommittees and, uh, and the beta and user acceptance testing that we've talked about. Sorry, I think I've, I'm repeating this. Uh, sorry, I've just repeated that. So, to conclude, and, at th and I'm sure at this stage of the day that's what everyone wants to do, um, there are some thank yous. First of all, the Board of AMCA and the Project Board of AMCA that uh, is in charge of BIMEPOS. Um, it took a leap of faith for AMCA to take a leadership position in the industry and commit the funds that I talked about earlier today, 150000 It also took a leap of faith for the state bodies of AMCA to get behind the national in initiative. And I think the uh, the board of AMCA should be commended. Our steering group have put an enormous amount of work in over the last 12 months. At times we've had up, up to 22 participants at meetings. At some meetings we've been down to five. Um, but it's, it's kept the, uh, inertia and energy. And uh, I think I said to, the group, uh, to this group last November, one of the most amazing things I've found out of this process to date is that um, members of that steering committee have been so uh, generous with their intellectual property and their knowledge of their companies and they've shared it with just about without exception uh, freely for the benefit of this initiative and that's to be commended. I would certainly like to thank all our presenters today and especially our keynote speakers, Paul Nunn of Teeth our international guest Jim Reese of TSI, Michael Canestraro of JC Canestraro, 
And um, and John Inman, I uh, I did leave you off the slide, but uh, thank you as well. Uh, and finally, uh, there's two people that have done an enormous amount of work individually for this initiative. And without their input, we certainly wouldn't be where we are today. And they're the AMCA project officer, Sumit. Well done, mate. You've done it again. Got us across the line. A lot of long nights and weekends. And, um, and most particularly, Warwick Stannis, who... Um, as I say, he's one of these people that shares his wealth of knowledge generously. He's got a great manner about him. He, uh, he epitomises collaboration and he gets everyone involved and it's a pleasure to do business with him every time. So, well done, Warwick. Okay, time to have some drinks and the software showcase. Once again, thanks for your attendance and uh, looks forward to your input in the coming months.